Well, DJ Switch is now in hiding, but he's bravely joining us to speak about what happened that night and what has happened since. And we thank you for doing that. Um, the videos that you posted have made you a target, and there are claims that the Nigerian army has been trailing you, threatening your life and forcing you to, to flee the country. The army has denied those claims, saying, and I quote, there are bigger fish to fry, end quote. Tell us what you saw that night and what is going on now. Well, um, thank you for having me, Becky. Thank you for uh, giving us your platform to continue talking and sharing the story. What I experienced that day was the worst experience in my life. The Nigerian army that is supposed to protect us came with no warning, none, nobody, no, no representative to come speak to us at first, at least they just came in guns blazing. We heard gunshots from behind, um, from behind the toll gate because we were on one side of the toll gate and we heard gunshots from behind and people running. So what we did was just to go down and sit down and just stay still, wave our flags. So because we, we, we believe that if we waved our flags, they would see that we are not here to cause any arm, uh, harm. We're not here to cause any troubles. We're just here protesting, as is our right to do so. So there was no warning, nothing. They came shooting. People were just dropping. I, I, I can't even explain that to you. It was such a chaotic scene that most times I find it difficult to close my eyes without seeing those scenes. And after they left, the Nigerian police came, SARS to be precise, because looking at the uniform, the ones we could see, and especially one man that was putting on white, I don't know who he is or something, but he had a pistol, kind of like a small gun, and he was just shooting at us directly, and we were just running for our lives. That's the short story of it, really. Mm -hmm. Just after the Lekki Gate incident, I, I spoke with the Lagos State Governor. Have a listen to what he told me. Becky, I, I, I genuinely believe there will be change for two reasons. One, you know, what has happened, especially in Lagos, is, is extremely unimaginable. That's number one. Number two, it was, it was a clear and call, you know, for all of us in government, you know, especially, you know, understanding and realizing, you know, um, what the youth, or what they truly want us to be doing, you know. So it hit all of us like a thunderbolt, and it was just, you know, a wake-up call. Response to what you just heard there. With no due respect, I actually challenge the governor of Lagos State to just say the truth. They know the truth. It's been out there, there are conflicting stories with each other. Nigerians have died. This is not a time to play games. Families are looking for their loved ones. To be honest with you, with regards to me, I don't know how to feel because in, in one hand, I'm, I'm grateful I'm alive today. In the other hand, I, I don't know if, if I should say I'm lucky. It's almost like I'm saying the others were not lucky. It is time that we own up to the things that we're supposed to own up to. The governor has a responsibility to the citizens of Lagos State and he should say the truth. Nigeria's president on Tuesday vowed to prevent a repeat of what have been these wider anti-police brutality protests through dialogue and through listening, he says, to all stakeholders. I just wonder, how do his comments make you feel? To be honest, Becky, at this point, I do not hold what the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria says to any, I can't hold it to end to heart. Nigeria is a dictatorship with a democratic face. And I think that is primarily to, to 
to please the international communities. It is our right to protest anything that we see and change that we demand. The Nigerian government has used force from the beginning, starting with trying to infiltrate a peaceful protest with thugs. That didn't work out. And then they've moved to bringing the military in. So the same government that says that they had banned SARS, and this is going for four to five years now, they keep banning the same SARS, is saying that he wants to have a dialogue. The president hasn't even come out once to address the, the shooting at the toll gate. So no, Becky, I do not take his word to heart. We need action, we need change, and most importantly, we need accountability. You've said about this whole experience, and I quote here, it is cause for what I believe is just. It is shock at the response of my government towards the people it is sworn to protect. It is courage to speak up no matter what. And for me, the will to see justice, accountability and a change in Nigeria, no matter how much is offered to me or threats to me. Do you believe that change will come? And how long do you think you will need to stay in hiding for? To be honest, um, I will start with the, um, with the fact that the will is there. This generation, as we like to call ourselves, we call ourselves Sorosoke. That means speak up. Unlike the past where they've, they've oppressed our parents, they've misinformed our parents because we didn't have social media back then. They owned the media houses, they owned the newspapers. But this is a different generation. And that goes to the end where I said that I believe strongly that Nigeria will change. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And now the Nigerian people, especially this generation, they are speaking up. The shock for me was to see that for the first time, something that gave me such belief I never thought I would see Nigerians come together with the same voice and speak in one voice, demanding change, demanding an end to police brutality. I never thought that our government, first time they are seeing this, would respond with, in the action with which they did. Seizing the passport of Mo, for example, arresting their arms, chasing people out of town and literally out of the country. I believe that the fact that I have been given a second chance at this life I don't know what will happen to me. I don't know what will happen to my career. All my bookings, everything is gone. I don't know, but what I do know is this. The fact that I have this chance, I will use this opportunity to tell the story, no matter the length, no matter the breadth, I would use the opportunity to tell the story. My hope is to go back home. I don't want to run anywhere. People think that I have sought some sort of asylum. That is not a fact. But you can't chase down everything. Those things are not important. I want to be able to go home, but I want to make sure that I've gotten my story out and story of other witnesses out under oath. And then when I'm done, I go home. If they want to pick me up at that point, there's nothing to try and silence me for anymore. So if they still want to pick me up, no problem.